In this video, we'll explain what triggers are, when to use them, and the different types available. Triggers listen for specific interactions on your website or mobile app, such as button clicks, form submissions, and page views. When these interactions occur, your trigger will let the tag know that it should fire. Every tag must have at least one trigger to work. Now, let's briefly describe each type of trigger available in Google Tag Manager. Page view triggers fire when a page is loaded in the browser. They are used to measure page visits and can be configured to fire at different stages, such as when the browser begins to load the page, when the DOM is ready, or when the window is fully loaded. Click triggers fire when elements on a page are clicked. You can choose to track clicks on all elements or just on links. These triggers are useful for tracking button clicks, link clicks, and other types of interaction. Form submission triggers fire when a form is submitted. They can be configured to wait for all tags to fire before submission or to check if the form was successfully sent. Scroll depth triggers fire based on how far a user has scrolled down a page. You can set them to trigger at specific percentages or pixel values of the page's height or width. Element visibility triggers fire when a specific element becomes visible in the viewport. These are useful for tracking interactions with elements as they come into view. YouTube video triggers fire based on interactions with embedded YouTube videos. You can track events like when a video starts, pauses, completes, or reaches a specific progress point. Custom event triggers fire based on custom events pushed to the data layer. This is useful for tracking unique interactions that aren't covered by standard triggers. History change triggers fire when the URL fragment changes or when the HTML5 push date API is used. This is useful for tracking virtual page views in single page applications. JavaScript error triggers fire when a uncaught JavaScript exception occurs. They can be used to log error messages to your analytics tool. Timer triggers fire at a specific interval. They are useful for measuring how long a user spends on a page. Trigger groups allow you to combine multiple triggers into one. The trigger group will fire only after all the selected triggers have fired at least once. These various trigger types give you the flexibility to track a wide range of interactions on your website or app. You can find a link to the article detailing trigger types in the video description. All right, creating a new trigger is simple. Click Tags and then New. Click Trigger Configuration and choose the type of trigger you want to create. Complete the setup for the selected trigger type. You can also create a trigger directly from a tag definition. During the tag configuration, click Triggering, then Add, and select Trigger Configuration. Choose the type of trigger you want, complete the setup, and you're done. To edit an existing trigger, go to Triggers and click on the name of the trigger you want to edit. Click Trigger Configuration to make your changes. You can also copy, delete, view changes, or show notes for the selected trigger by collecting more actions. New triggers default to fire on all events of the associated event type. You can refine this using trigger filters. Filters consist of a variable, an operator, and a value. For example, you can set a filter to fire a trigger only on page views where the URL contains products. In the next video, we'll talk more about variables. Firing triggers tell tags when to execute. A tag will fire when any one of its trigger conditions are met. Blocking triggers or trigger exceptions prevent tags from firing under certain conditions. For instance, you can set a tag to fire on all pages except for the thank you HTML page. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to explore more trigger types and best practices to optimize your tag management.